Actually, let's talk a little bit more about creatine. 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 This is a supplement worth taking. Welcome to Longevity 101, brought to you by House of Longevity. Now, let's get into it. The top one, though, of all of them by far that has an incredibly strong safety profile. It has, it is a cheap, it is a simple form to get, has a important magnitude of effect and is uh, effective across multiple domains of physical health and performance. And it is because of that, it is my crown jewel. It is, in my opinion, without question, the Michael Jordan of all supplementation. And that's creatine monohydrate. It affects so many things. We typically think about it as its muscle stuff, right? You've, you've talked kind of, you quickly were talking about the creatine phosphate system, but we have to realize um, the mass majority of research on creatine phosphate is not in sport performance and has not been for 20 years. It's in clinical and it has everything from effects um, on the neurological system to there have been associations to mental health and depression. And to be very clear, I am certainly not saying you can take creatine and cure anything. And I'm not saying it's going to stop you from depression or anything, but I'm saying there's, there's a lot of research in these areas. Uh, and in fact, there's enough mechanism now um, to understand the metabolic needs. Mm -hmm. People think the meta, um, I'm a muscle guy, right? So I'm going to think about the metabolism needed to fuel muscle. But we forget cells, immune cells, red blood cells, nerve cells, astrocytes, brain, all this stuff requires energy. Creatine is not a muscle building supplement. Creatine is an energy producing supplement. It just so happened to have been commandeered by the fitness industry and the muscle building crew. So it's kind of like just misconstrued everything. Here's what we have to understand, how creatine actually works. See, creatine allows us to create more ATP. When we come down to how we create energy, it's really simple. Well, it's actually very complex, but it's explained simply. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is adenosine and three phosphate molecules. When we go through the process of creating energy, we remove one of the phosphate molecules and that adenosine triphosphate now becomes adenosine diphosphate. Now, what happens is to some degree, in order to turn that adenosine diphosphate back into adenosine triphosphate, we need some creatine. Okay, so what happens is it's the energy of removing that phosphate molecule from ATP to ADP that creates a spark of energy. So in order to recreate that spark, we need to reattach that phosphate molecule. So we've removed the phosphate molecule, but now we gotta put it back so that we can rip it off again and create more energy. Now there's a couple different ways that we can do that but creatine allows us to do it really quick. You see, creatine is also known as creatine phosphate. So creatine carries the phosphate over to the adenosine diphosphate so that it can create new energy again. Without that creatine, it doesn't happen as fast. So what happens is it's really hard to pull creatine from our system all the time. Eventually it slows down. So when we take a small amount of exogenous creatine, it allows that ATP process to occur faster. That's why we can get more strength and more energy in the gym with creatine. But here's what's wild. Per capita, if you will, our brain uses more energy than anything. Our tiny little heads, our tiny little brains take up 20% of our entire body's adenosine triphosphate. 20% of our entire molecular energy. This is a supplement worth taking. It's clearly passed test number one, which is it's safe. Uh, and it passes test number two, which is it's probably got efficacy. Um, well, I shouldn't say it. It's got efficacy. The real question is, you know, are you okay with a little bit of weight gain? Because that's, you know, you're going to pull more water in. So, uh, mm. like, just a muscle cell being more hydrated, there's some evidence that that can actually improve the that it's more anabolic environment uh but regardless of the mechanism we do know that when you take creatine you see improvements in lean mass and some people will say well that's just water well but that's what muscle mostly is isn't muscle it? is 70 percent water yeah. so whether it's and there's actually research to show that even non-contractile just water improves may improve strength and contractibility so, so we're not sure exactly how, mm. but it could just be like the volumization of the cell is just a benefit. There's also sort of a, you, you could also kind of make up at least conceptually a framework that says a more hydrated cell is more able to calculate, uh, more, more able to carry out its function, right? So right. if the function 
of a myofibril is contractile release, contract release, and it has more water, it, you, it sort of seems logical to me that it's going to be better at clearing metabolic waste mm -hmm. and recruiting fuel. So creatine is a high energy phosphate donor. So it, in, in muscle, it exists as phosphocreatine. And when you take supplemental creatine, uh, you'll, it'll come into the muscle, it'll get a phosphate attached to it, phosphocreatine. And originally the, the only mechanism we thought of, was, well, it's a high energy phosphate donor, so people will yep. perform better. But then we saw people increase their lean body mass, increase their strength. Uh, and there's even like benefits in terms of cognitive benefits appear to be pretty clear that there's some cognitive benefits as well. Creatine has also been shown to have an important role in brain function. Creatine can actually be used as a fuel source in the brain. And it, there's some evidence that it can enhance the function of certain uh, frontal cortical circuits that feed down onto or rather connect to areas of the brain that are involved in mood regulation and motivation. And that's where creatine plays a role in depression. What is the threshold level of creatine to supplement in order to get the cognitive benefit? Appears to be at least five grams per day. I do believe that a small microdose of creatine is very powerful for long-term brain health and for overall quick bursts of energy. The nice thing about creatine is you notice it fast, right? You don't have to load with a bunch of creatine. In fact, it's been shown that just one to two grams of creatine can have a pretty solid effect. Five grams is enough to load your muscles with a lot of creatine if you are trying to get a little bit more of a weightlifting effect. If you're not doing a lot of physical activity, one to two grams of creatine per day is going to get you a phenomenal mental boost. If you are doing physical activity, you have to account for that too. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to take just one to two grams of creatine, then go work out, burn it all up, and not have enough left over to get a mental boost. But I would say, three grams is about where you need to be if you're moderately working out. And if you're working out with a lot of intensity, maybe bump it up to four. Five, in my opinion, is the absolute upper limit. And it's good to know, so you don't actually have to be physically active to reap any benefits from it. And that, that was the no. question I had because, yeah. I mean, again, thinking of parents and yeah. grandparents yeah, yeah, yeah. and, yeah. right? I mean, that's, that's yeah. the, the uh, issue with the yeah. ones that are not physically active yeah, absolutely. or that I mean, there's there's people that walk their dogs and stuff, which is good. That right. at least gives them some physical activity. But yep. you don't have to be pumping iron and stuff. To, no, you no you don't. Because I always thought uh, about yeah. it that way. I'm like, well, I'm not like a gym rat, yeah, so yeah, yeah. do I need it? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I mean, I think the you know the stuff now with creating it, that they're uncovering that makes me think maybe this should be part of my regular routine actually has less to do with the muscle and more to do with the brain and the cognitive yeah. performance that. And what I would say, too, is people ask me about timing of yes. creatine, yeah, those sorts of things. There's some really small, really tenuous, I really want to emphasize that, evidence that perhaps after a workout might be better than before a workout. But I tell people, just take it whenever you'll take it regularly. So for me, I just get up in the morning and I take it. Gone up in price a little bit recently because of the supply chain stuff, but it's it's still relatively it's inexpensive. Incredibly inexpensive for for what you're getting. Yep. So you know when I see people talk about like some of these other supplements and they're not even taking creatine monohydrate, and I'm like, well, you're you're stepping over pennies, or sorry, you're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. If you're looking for the best source for creatine monohydrate, check out my channel partner, DoNotAge.org, a longevity research company that makes the purest supplements available. Click my link in the description and use coupon code STARK for a 10% discount on every purchase. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And check out one of these videos next.